you of divine connection. I want to share with you today, and I hope that you uh, brought your Bible with you. Uh, if you've got a bulletin, it's a good place in the back of it to take notes. But I want to share with you today my message. It's called Following in the Steps of Faith. Following in the Steps of Faith. And uh, before we get into the main scripture, and it'll be on the screen, but I hope you brought your Bible, uh, I just felt led to just encourage you with, with a thought out of the scripture. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk. How is your walk as a Christian? It's by faith, and it's not by sight. Every part of your life should be by your faith in God. Every area of your life should be by the faith of God, putting your faith in God. Not your reasoning, not your emotions, not your feelings, not even your circumstances. Every part of your life, every part of your life is to be, God, I'm releasing that into your hands and I want to walk in faith, trusting you and obeying you in every step of my life. Amen, church? Is this true? And I want to encourage you with this. Don't move away from your faith and trust in God. Don't move away from your faith and trust in God. And one of the things that the Bible tells us is that when we've done everything we know how to do in our walk with God, just take a, just stand. Just stand. And feelings and emotions and my reasoning and my circumstances is not going to take me away from my trust and my faith in God. And the reason is I'm his child. I belong to him. And so no matter how I feel, how it looks, however the wind is blowing, I'm going to stand and I'm going to trust God every step of the way. Amen? So with that, I'm going to ask that you would stand with me and as our custom, as was in the book of Nehemiah, the people of God stood when they heard the word of God. And if you, if you could, if you can't, that's fine too. But we're talking today about following in the steps of faith. And in Hebrews 11, verse 23, the Bible says, by faith, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Can you say amen? You can be seated. Several weeks ago, I shared this word with a group of us on our Wednesday night service, and Carol made the comment, uh, Jim, this needs to be shared on Sunday morning with the rest of us. And so with prayer and with just burning in my own heart, I'm going to repeat to you what I shared on Wednesday night because it's alive. And there's a few that heard it, but we all need to hear this. Amen? So we've read this text in Hebrews 11, 23, uh, the 29, the verses of chapter 11. Chapter 11 is called the faith chapter. It's talks about the heroes of faith through the ages as we see it in God's Word. They were real people. They had to overcome difficult situations, but they obeyed God by faith. They persevered and went through tremendous things. And so we're talking about Moses and his life here, but Moses' faith started with his family. His whole beginning um, 
started with his family. And I want to say this. Each one of us are on a journey of faith. Each one of us are on a journey. Some of us have just started. Some of us, like myself, have been doing this for 50 years. We are on a journey with God by faith. By faith, we're on this journey together. If you're a believer, you're on a journey. And let me just say this, it's not easy at times. Let's just be honest. It is not easy to walk by faith and trust God with the areas of our life. But the scripture that I read to you at the beginning, we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. And that's the important thing with us. Verse 23, it started, Moses' faith started with his parents. And the faith of his parents, and if you go back, you can read this story in Exodus 2. And you look at verses 1 to 10, it'll basically give you the history of Moses and his family. Pharaoh in Egypt, because of the increase of the children of Israel, said to the midwives, because there's so many uh, being born and we're, we're fearful that they're going to overtake us, the Egyptians. We want you, the midwives, to kill the males that are born, you know, toss them into the Nile River and the crocodiles and snakes and everything else and just drowning will take care of them. And the Bible says that the midwives feared God and wouldn't do it. And so when Moses was born to the house of Levi and uh, his parents, and it, the Bible says his mother saw that he was a beautiful child. The word beautiful there means healthy. I am not going to destroy my child. Now there was, there was a, uh, she had an older son named Aaron. And after Moses, there was um, another one born. Actually, he had an older sister. That's right. So he had Aaron and he had Miriam. Aaron, who became the first priest, and Miriam, who was a prophetess, they had no idea at that time what was going to happen. But it started with the prayers of the parents. And so they said, uh, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to kill the male child. We're not going to kill our child. And so when Moses began to grow, and let me just say this, Moses was the name that was given to him by Pharaoh's daughter, which means drawn out. She drew him out of the river. And But here's the thing that I was thinking about. I wonder what his real name was. You ever think about that? What was the name that Moses' mother and dad gave Moses at the beginning? So she put him in an ark, dabbed it with pitch, let him go and prayed over him. God, protect my son. I give him to you. And you know the story. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter. And her heart, the Bible says in Exodus 2, was filled with compassion for this little guy that was crying. And God was in that whole thing of guiding that little ark. And it's kind of like Jesus and the ark together. That was an ark for Moses, but Jesus is our ark of safety. And so Miriam, his sister, was watching this whole thing. And so she called and she, she went to the Pharaoh's daughter and she said, I know someone that can nurse this baby. This happened to be Moses' mother. And so she called Moses' Moses' mother and she nursed her son. But can you imagine everything that she was doing? And those and I don't know how long they weaned their child. Was it a couple years or several years, you know? They didn't have bottles back then. They didn't have Infamil or was Similac or whatever they made. The mothers did the nursing of the child. So who who knew how long? We don't know how long Moses' mother nursed Moses. But can you imagine all the time when she was with her son, knowing that uh, Pharaoh's daughter was now taking him? And she couldn't tell her. She couldn't say, you know, I'm, I'm this boy's mother. But she, by God, had her son, even though Pharaoh's daughter had him. And can you imagine what she prayed and what she declared over Moses? I want to find out what he's name was. That was ironic. What did she name him before he was called Moses? She, 
both as parents, said no to the Pharaoh or the king's edict that we're not going to kill our child. And let me just say this. The church of Jesus Christ needs to rise up and say, God, we've had enough abortion in this land. Because the spirit that was there to kill Moses and the spirit that was there with Pharaoh to kill Jesus is the same spirit in our land that just wants to kill a whole generation of babies that would have the knowledge of God. Do you understand that we need to rise up and say enough is enough? Because we have been taught by the media that you're to shut up and not say anything while millions of babies have been murdered since 1973. Folks, are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't think, do you believe that the church should rise up by our prayers and by our influence and by who we put in office? I will never vote for a politician that believes in murdering babies. But sometimes I think we as Christians, like we're helpless, there's nothing we can do, even though we know it's evil. Yes, you can do. You can ask God Almighty for mercy on this land. Because innocent blood has been shed. 49 million babies have been destroyed since 1973. And we can pray that God will make an end. And we can put people in office that have the values that we have, that we believe in life and not are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes I think Christians think, well, I'm just we're handcuffed. That's just, just the way it is. No, it's not. There needs to be an indignation in us that we pray for life to come. We pray that, God, that you'll reverse this curse. And abortion is a curse on the land. Verse 24, Moses is now grown. And... The Bible says in verse 24, he refused to be called Pharaoh's grandson. In a sense, Pharaoh's grandson or his mother's son, part of the royal court. Pharaoh's daughter's son. Adopted, yes, but part of the court. And he refused to be called uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And let me tell you why. God was beginning to move and put something in the heart of that, that little bet with a baby and now... He's a young man. Because let me, let me tell you, something in him was saying, this is not my identity. This is just not who I am. And God was beginning to move upon Moses that this is not who I am. This is not my people. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, he went out when he was 40 years old. 40 years old. He went out to look upon his brethren. He went out to look upon his people. You know who his people was? The children of Israel. Remember, he's born in Pharaoh's court, or he's living in Pharaoh's court. He's got an education. He's got everything that he ever needs. He's the spoiled boy with the silver spoon in his mouth. Pharaoh's daughter. They're slaves, suffering. But he went out to look upon them because he identified with them. That was not his identity, verse 24 says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It was a big choice for him. A choice to suffer. A choice to suffer and identify with the people of God who were slaves in the land. Who were building the storage cities of Pharaoh. Mud and straw. And then when Moses later on came upon the scene, we ain't going to have any more straw. You'll have to get it for yourself. How many have seen... See the, see the mills, the Ten Commandments. How I many you know I'm just telling you the story that you've seen on TV? That's in the Word of God. Because he realized that everything was temporary. The sin that was in Egypt, the immorality, the idolatry, the demonic deception, that was the condition of the Egyptians. They were immoral. They had other gods. They were deceived. They were a godless nation. And Moses decided he would put his faith in Jehovah God. He had no Bible. 
All he had was a burning fire that later on he would meet the God in the burning fire. Are you tracking with me? Moses' life. There was a faith in Moses. And I believe it's because of not, yes, it was God's choice, but it was also the choice of his parents and his mother who nursed him, but it was also Moses' choice to say there's something more than to see those people suffer who I identify with. See, we, this is your identity here, the people of God, not the world. If you feel closer to the people in the world than the people of God, something's wrong. That's not who you are. Your identity is the Lord Jesus Christ and the family of God. Are you hearing me this morning? Demonic deception, a godless nation. And Moses went out and saw an Egyptian mistreating an Israeli out in the fields, and he killed him. You know the story. Moses killed an Egyptian Buried him in the sand. The next day, he said, trying to break up a fight between a couple of Israeli, and they said, who, who made you a prince over us? Are you going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian? It was known. Ran for his life. He went another 40 years into Saudi Arabia, Midian. Saudi Arabia. Part of his journey of faith. It was in his heart to lead his people while he was still in the household of Pharaoh. And there was over a million Jews who were slaves that it was in his heart to lead them out. And yet he didn't even have a complete revelation of God that was coming with the burning bush. Tracking with me? Look what else the Bible says here. In Acts 7.22, you don't have to turn to it. The Bible says this about Moses while he was in Egypt. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. This is Acts 7.22 I'm reading to you. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. This guy was something else. Look at that. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Moses, I believe, because he killed a man, was strong. He was educated. And he was a man that had force be behind his words and also in the deeds that he did while he was in Egypt. Let me tell you this. This was the Moses before he had the burning bush encounter. He was mighty, and, and this is all of you guys, and best of you men need to get this. He was mighty in the flesh. He had force of will, look at it, in words and deeds. He, I believe he was physically strong, and this guy was educated, he was smart, but something was burning in him, and it was to know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the story that would pass down because Israel was in Egypt 430 years. Slaves. One generation after another, his parents were slaves. Verse 26. It says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt where he looked at a reward. What does that mean? It means that Moses had a revelation to his heart that there was a coming Messiah. Just like Abraham had a relation, had a revelation that there was a coming Messiah. Jesus talked about it in John uh, 8.56. Abraham had a revelation that the Messiah was coming. Moses had a revelation that there was a Messiah that was coming. And he chose, Moses chose, to have reproach with the slaves that the reward would come in his life 
than the riches that were in Egypt. Like I said, he was born and he lived in Pharaoh's court. Money, gold, silver, all that stuff, everything he wanted. Pharaoh's daughter's boy. He said no. Let me just say this to all of you today. The hardship and the things that people go... Listen, being a Christian in America is nothing. Easy. Be a Christian in China. Or our suffering brothers and sisters under a maniac in North Korea. Or in a Muslim world where you're killed. The underground church in China. We have it made here. This is nothing. But we need to realize that putting Christ first and living for Him with all of our heart, those riches, those rewards that are going to come for us, it may not be in this life, is greater than the lives that are in the world. The lives that are in the world. God wants you blessed, but that's not your Lord. Are you hearing me this morning? Moses said, I would rather be with them, slave with mud, hardly having enough food to eat, than everything I have with all of my gold and silver and my prestige and everything else being manicured like a well-mannered quarter horse stallion. Living life like that and be with God's people. Verse 27, Moses, by faith, he forsook, he forsook Egypt, probably because Pharaoh tried to kill him because he killed that Egyptian and became known. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He turned his back on Egypt, everything that Egypt stood for, so also for us, this world system. He didn't fear Pharaoh. He didn't care about the wrath of Pharaoh. And he endured going through the desert to Saudi Arabia 40 years and becoming a shepherd. Moses learned how to take care of God's people because he was a shepherd in the desert as part of his journey of faith, part of his training. Did you see that? 40 years. Moses' life is basically broken up in three 40-year periods. Egypt, 40 years in the desert, and the last 40 taking care of, taking God's people to the desert, to the promised land. Do you see that? I want to say this to you again, all of you. There are rewards to the faithful. I want to say that to you again. You ought to write it down for yourself, for your life. There are rewards to the faithful. Moses went through the desert. Moses experienced rejection. He said, it doesn't matter. I want God more than I want anything else. In chapter 3, you begin to see his encounter with God and going back to Egypt after 40 years and presented himself even with signs. Read the text in Exodus 3. And telling the children of Israel, God sent me. I'm your deliverer. We're leaving Egypt. And guess what happened to God's people? Pharaoh said, uh, you want a day off? You want a day to go out into the desert and worship? Uh, there's no more straw for you. Get your own straw. And it even became harder burden. And Moses showed them the signs that God showed him at the burning bush situation. And things got worse. I want to say this to you. A lot of times things get worse. Things get darker before the answer comes. Are you praying for deliverance of something? Are you praying that God will give you a breakthrough? A lot of times it gets worse before the light comes. Have you found that out? But don't forget that God is still God. Don't give up. Persevere by faith. See, faith always perseveres. Faith doesn't give up. Jesus said to Thomas, and Thomas, when they told him that the Lord was alive in John 20, I believe, he said, I won't believe unless I can see his hands and put my hand into his side. 
And Jesus appeared a few years or a few days later and he said, Thomas, put your hand in my side, look at my hands, and quit being so full of unbelief, but believe. And then Jesus said this, and it's for every one of you today. Blessed is he who has not seen, but believes. Do you have to see something to believe it? See, that's not faith. God, faith is seeing something with your spiritual eyes that you don't see with your natural eyes. Did you hear that? Faith is seeing things with your spiritual eyes and not with your natural eyes. Blessed are those who believe even though they haven't seen. Verse um, 28. All this is just new conditions. All the signs, all the things against the, the ten plagues against Egypt and they're leaving Egypt. You know the whole situation. Now God gives Moses some instruction. He says, I want you to tell all of my people, get into your house, take a lamb, take the blood on that lamb, hit the lentils of bomb, 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 stay inside. Because the firstborn of Egypt is going to die and then there's going to be such an outcry, then they're going to let you go. What if Moses would have said this? And this is where we live right here. I never did this before. You know, God will ask you to do things you've never done before. What if Moses would have said, oh, I'm sorry, I... Never done that before, and I don't want to kill a lamb. I can't. I don't like blood. And what if he would have come up with some type of excuse? See, he had come too far of seeing God's miraculous hand to not, not do it, because his faith in God was going to determine the deliverance for a whole nation. By the way, he was married and had a couple sons too. Faith means obeying God when you've never done something before. The symbolic blood on the lentils all point to the Lamb of God. They sacrifice the blood of the Lamb, but who is the real Lamb? The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. They stayed indoors and God smote the firstborn of Egypt, even the firstborn of animals. And there was such screaming and crying. Pharaoh said, leave, just leave. Take the whole million plus people and leave. And they left. And hear this. They plundered their Egyptians. They plundered the Egyptians. And they asked them for gold and silver and clothing. And slaves left Egypt rich. Because God was in it. When you obey God, there are blessings of obedience. There are blessings for faithfulness. You will be blessed because you've been faithful and you've been obedient. And then they get to verse 29 and we're going to close. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land where the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. And so here comes Pharaoh and his chariots and they're coming right up to that Red Sea and all of a sudden, there's the sea, there's Pharaoh, and we know the story about the fire by night and the cloud by day, and God kept the two parties away from each other all night, and, this, and the people cried out, the Egyptians are coming to kill us. The Egyptians are coming to take us back to Egypt. The Egyptians are coming back to take revenge because they had lost the firstborn of all of their animals, but especially their children. They were angry. And this is what God said. God told Moses, stand still, stand still. Everybody's screaming and yelling, we're going to die. Moses was told by God, tell my people, Israel, the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. And he took his staff and God opened up the Red Sea. They walked on dry land all night, all day. Got over a million people on the other side, which is now present day Saudi Arabia. And God just folded over the wind, or over the waves, and they have even found the wheels of the Egyptian carts down at the bottom of that sea. That could have only 
existed during that time in history. Proof. I can show it to you. But what if Moses would have said, uh, I'm sorry, I've never done this before. He didn't. And let me just say this to all of you, parents, grandparents, whoever you have in your life, your steps of faith, somebody's watching. Someone's watching your faith in action. And it is not too late to walk by faith and to serve God because someone's watching. Someone's looking. It could be someone at your job. It could be your neighbor. It could be at the school you work at or the job you have. Your steps of faith, people are watching. And guess who are they going to call on when the junk of life comes? You. Tell me about the God that you serve. Amen. Moses' journey started with his parents. Their prayers, their decisions. They took a stand. Parents, take a stand. You don't have to go along with everything the school district tries to put on you and your children. Who will stand up and say, I'm sorry, my kids are not going to learn that in school. Take a stand. We're not going to allow that in our society. Take a stand. Take a stand. Yeah, but I don't want to be rejected. Oh, well, guess what? When you signed up for Jesus, you joined the school of rejection. You did. That's just part of walking with Christ is get over trying to please everybody. This story, your story, is about faith decisions. Your faith decisions. Footprints. The message today. Following in the steps of faith. And I believe there's people in front of you that have made some real decisions of faith and the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, and Paul said this also, follow after me as I follow Christ. How many of you have some examples of people who love God? Come on. And you need to follow their footsteps of faith besides the steps of faith in this book. Amen? Worship team, come up here. If you would, Today, if you need to start the pathway of following Jesus all the way, not 90%, not 80%, but all the way that you're going to follow him and follow in the footsteps of those who have gone before, especially the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as the heroes of faith. Those stories in the Bible weren't written to be cute little stories. They were written to inspire you so you will walk by faith also. Amen? Let's stand together. After we worship the Lord of Song, if you would like prayer, maybe today is a day you need to make a fresh commitment that I've only been doing a portion. I haven't trusted God with my whole life and everything in my life. We'd like to pray with you. Today's your day to walk out of this place 100% following the Lord Jesus Christ, not holding anything back. Amen? We need to respond to what we heard today. If you're away from God, today is your day to come home. Let's worship the Lord.